Hi, I'm Laura. Hey, I'm Stefan, and you're listening to Attributed, a podcast library by Dream Data. The purpose of it is to store and share all the knowledge that we have gathered across Dream Data employees through our LinkedIn Lives, podcasts, and webinars. The typical topics you'll find here can be stuff like marketing, sales, B2B ads, operations, social selling, maybe. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this very exciting LinkedIn Live with LinkedIn about LinkedIn offline conversions. How cool could that be? We're so much looking forward to this event and welcome everybody who's joining. For the questions, keep them running out for throughout the whole session. I will be picking them up through the session while it's going through and Right now, I would like to introduce Dean Gao, Senior Business Development Manager at LinkedIn. Dean, it's such a pleasure to have you today. It's great to be here, and I love your intro as well. LinkedIn Live with LinkedIn about LinkedIn. That's beautiful. Absolutely, <laughs> Dean. So nice to have you here. What do you do at LinkedIn? Yeah, sure. Happy to give a quick intro. So hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Dean, and I'm a Senior Manager of Business Development for LinkedIn's Marketing Solutions team. So within this team, uh, I work with our measurements product suite, specifically conversion tracking products. And my role is to work with great partners like Dream Data uh, to integrate, scale, and also bring our solutions to market. I've been with this team for about five months and LinkedIn for five years, and I'm based in sunny San Francisco. Oh, that's awesome. And thank you for partnering with us. It's so fantastic. So what Dean is alluding to is, and that's also one of the reasons why we're having this event, is that Dream Data has become LinkedIn trusted marketing solution and we're listed on their marketplace. There it goes. So <laughs> we're listed up there as the only attribution solution so far. So we're very excited about this and that's why we created an event to talk about LinkedIn offline conversions. Dean, let's kick this off with that. So what are LinkedIn offline conversions? Yep, sure, happy to go into that. So uh, in a nutshell, uh, LinkedIn offline conversions enables advertisers to connect uh, their offline data. And by offline, I mean conversions that happen off website, back to LinkedIn in order to more accurately measure and optimize. Uh, for the effectiveness of ad campaigns. So for example, offline data could be in-store purchases or orders or inquiries made via a phone call or in-person visits. And with those kind of data, customer can start sending that either manually or with a official LinkedIn marketing partner like Dream Data to stream that data to LinkedIn. And once that data is properly ingested, LinkedIn will attribute those events to campaigns and I think the nice thing is advertisers will now be able to see offline conversions reporting directly, I think either with Dream Data or within your campaign manager, um, and then their campaigns will be optimized to increase uh, the conversion rate. So to give you an example, uh, right? So for B2B scenarios, especially, the customer journey takes place across multiple online and offline touch points. The customer can see an ad, they fill out an online form, they attend a trade show, and then they end up purchasing with a seller on the phone. So in that example, website-based conversion tracking, such as tags, won't necessarily capture the events that are happening offline, but those events are very valuable to your business, right? So instead, advertisers can leverage offline conversions to share this data with LinkedIn and get a more accurate measure of how each campaign impacted uh, those particular events. And I think the key thing here is that many marketers use LinkedIn to drive leads with the expectation that those leads will eventually convert to a sale. So offline conversions helps tell the story by measuring LinkedIn's influence throughout the various stages of lead qualification all the way down to that final sale. So in my mind, I think this solution is a really good fit uh, for advertisers who have really important business outcomes that take place offline. Mm -hmm. For example, in store, in person, in your call center, or anything that can't be tracked by a pixel or a tag on the website. It would be great for advertisers who really want to understand a fuller picture of their marketing impact. And it's great for advertisers who want to prepare the business for upcoming privacy changes, including mm -hmm. cookie deprecation, because offline conversion does not depend on cookies to work. So 
that will be kind of my four minute description uh, of all that. Yeah, there are a lot of things to unpack. So like the earlier or the usual ways of using LinkedIn ads, well, it's working pretty nicely, but a lot of companies are talking about, oh, this is expensive. We're getting good leads, but that's very expensive. And so in terms of LinkedIn offline conversions, you mentioned really many things for how important it is for B2Bs because there are so many touches, but in a nutshell, so why is it such a big deal comparing to what people used to do with us just before to get them to perform? Yeah, I think you alluded to this perfectly. I think this is a big deal because it addresses some of the major pain points of advertisers today. So Laura, I'm sure you heard of this or our attendees have all heard of comments such as like, we can see the clicks, but once the deal actually closes, how do we know whether marketing or LinkedIn really had a role in that, right? How do we know what that impact is? Because that sometimes is very hard to measure. Uh, and that's a challenge that we've seen on the LinkedIn side as well. Like we know our leads or our ads are driving value, but it's really hard to measure kind of that down funnel impact. And also I think advertisers might be facing other challenges. Like you can't really directly prove how your ads are driving sales. And sometimes full funnel reporting can be very manual. Uh, it can be fragmented or incomplete. Many of our transactions on conversion events can happen offline. Mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned, the B2B journey is very complex, very long and spans many touch points. So many important transactions happen offline and they're really kind of like missed, you know, without a tool to measure offline conversion impact. And I think the final challenge is that website pixels or tags sometimes can't really capture the events that are most important to your business mm -hmm. due to either privacy restrictions or future events like third party cookie deprecation which we're all seeing impact the industry today. So yeah, I think just to kind of close out on that point, I think where offline conversions come in, it's really a way to measure meaningful business outcomes and really get a more complete view of how LinkedIn ads are impacting your total business. Um, so when I think about how those challenges map out to offline conversions, I think of maybe three main things. One is offline conversions allows you to really kind of understand your ads down funnel impact really helps you understand how ads are actually driving ROI by connecting them to offline events for better measurement and reporting. And one thing I know we'll probably talk about more is optimization as well. Mm -hmm. So optimization of your ad dollars, right? Because once the offline data is attributed to your campaigns, LinkedIn will optimize your campaigns to maximize for those conversions in the back end, And yeah. that leads to better ROI to your ad spend. And I think the last point here is just security because you're tracking conversions with cookie list technology, you're kind of future proofing your business and you're very well prepared for the changing privacy landscape because it's a cookie list solution. Right. Yeah. Let's talk about some of those things. So you mentioned ROI a couple of times already. So what is the expected increased ROI when using LinkedIn offline conversions? Yeah, I love that question. I think there's a couple of things to unpack here. Um, I think the first benefit to ROI is really just understanding how impactful your LinkedIn ads are in resulting in the key behaviors that I think are really important to you as a marketer, yeah. for example, conversions, all right? So offline conversions helps you better understand how effective your campaigns are in driving conversions. You see the impact being measured in the reporting as an output. So. We also seen in terms of success metrics, customer, customers utilizing offline conversions, they've seen an 8% average lift in attributed conversions and 7% reduction in cost per acquisition. So I think these are really, really powerful stats that marketers care about, and it's exciting to see some real impact uh, in some of those numbers. And then beyond measurement, I think it's optimization as well, because yeah you will see your kind of ROI increase because the ads shown to your customers will be selected, uh, selected and optimized based on actual conversion data that you're sharing with LinkedIn. Right. So when you set up a LinkedIn campaign and if you select conversions as your campaign objective, once your conversions get sent into LinkedIn, they get attributed to your LinkedIn ads via offline conversions. LinkedIn will then start optimizing your campaigns for conversions that all happens in the back end. And I think it's a great way to maximize your marketing dollars on LinkedIn. Absolutely. And especially talking about those 7% of improvement of your ROI. I mean, that's already of the 
budget that you're spending on LinkedIn. And those on at B2Bs are usually significant parts of your marketing budget used at LinkedIn. And not just getting better qualified leads, but also moving on to saving money actually using offline conversions. I think this is a very beautiful way to wrap up B2B customer journeys in a way that it will never happen only on LinkedIn. And if we can map all the touches in the customer journey throughout everything that is happening and push it back to LinkedIn to get more of those, this is very impactful. Can you talk a little bit more about the reduction of cost per acquisition? So besides better targeting, how do you calculate the better cost per acquisition? Yeah, I think, you know, it, it speaks to like the conversion events that are important in acquiring a customer. And when you think about the customer journey across the funnel conversion from a lead to a sale, right? There might be many, many important events that lead to that acquisition that is happening offline. But before using a solution of offline conversions, you're not able to attribute those events to a specific ad campaign. Right. So you're actually kind of blind to the fact that, hey, my ad campaign actually drove, you know, somebody's attendance at a trade show or it led to this phone call from a salesperson, right, to end up acquiring that customer. So I think that number mostly comes from now that you're actually able to attribute uh, those down funnel events to a specific ad campaign. And that really helps you understand how that campaign is being measured. You're kind of like essentially just taking into account all the different variables, right, and get a more complete look. And because you're able to attribute those events, you end up getting a lower uh, CPA and you get more conversions attributed to your campaign. Nice. Yeah. yeah so we, you can finally tell your CFO that what we're doing with LinkedIn is not just expensive, but it's actually bringing us better leads that are better qualified, even if we have met them offline anywhere else than, than on this platform. Fantastic. Thank you. Exactly. Yeah. I think you're telling the whole connected story, right? In, in that nice. case. So I think that is the key. Absolutely. And yeah, so what we spoke about so far is like the benefits of LinkedIn offline conversions that we see at Dream Data. We're using that all the time. And some of our clients already started to implement it. Well, we're seeing there are four things that Jeremy has been speaking on the videos today as well. Optimize relevance of your ads, really, really important better audience matching. So you're matching the audiences that you are actually pushing your ads to more accurate reporting. Uh, who doesn't want that? <laughs> and for sure, better ROI that we have been speaking about, like, like what's not to like, it's the perfect mm -hmm. platform. So let's move a little bit into the works of the offline conversions. So how does it actually work if you were to implement this? Yeah, it's actually quite simple. In terms of how to set it up. And I think there's essentially two main steps. The first step is to just connect your data source. So you can do that either manually or via a LinkedIn marketing partner like Dream Data. And I'm sure Laura, you might have more to say to this and keep me honest, but when you use Dream Data, essentially the data will flow in an automatic fashion, right? So it saves you a lot of work from having to manually kind of upload it with LinkedIn, which is the other option. And it's really ideal for kind of like the larger volumes of conversion data that needs to be sent at a really high frequency. So in this case, you know, you will set up your data stream with dream data, for example, and then you can start sending those data to LinkedIn. And the second part to this is to create the conversion rule. So when you create a conversion rule, you indicate the type of conversion event, you indicate how long you want your look back window to be, and also which attribution model you want to use. And then you'll associate that conversion rule to a campaign that you created with LinkedIn to start attributing. But I think both of these steps can be done either via Dream Data or within Campaign Manager LinkedIn. And I believe Dream Data has set up some default values here in the back end. So you likely won't have to worry too much uh, about this step. So then now you have the data streaming and the conversion rule and association set. You pr pretty much like did all you need to do for setup at this point. And the data will start flowing into LinkedIn. And then what will happen next is that LinkedIn will look for members who were served your ad and then either click or view that ad within the attribution window that you were set um, and then match it to the data that you sent for attribution. Mm -hmm. So you will then see kind of the output of conversion data get reported for your campaigns. 
And then once the attribution happens, you will also see optimization of your campaigns in the back end to improve your conversion rates. So that is essentially how, how it works and in the flow of how to set it up. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound too complex. And I love that you make it easy for your clients as well to them buy a little bit better targeted mm -hmm. ads for sure. And with dream data to add on top of this, one thing that you can also choose to do, usually in B2B long customer journeys, you care also about how far in the pipeline those prospects have gone. So instead of just looking into some of the conversions, you can look into further pipeline stages and ask LinkedIn to move those and buy more, ad, more targeted ads for those specific companies or people to target. I think that's pretty nice. Yeah, I think it's great too. And in terms of making it easy, I think dream data setup makes it really easy for advertisers to use as well. I think all they need to do is turn on that streaming option and you can start streaming in real time and in bulk. And that's something that we, we really met really like, like kind of recommend because versus having to do it manually, you know, using a solution like dream data, it really kind of requires less resources and requires like less maintenance of you having to do that manual upload. And I also think that dream data as a B2B data and reporting platform is really well positioned to kind of help you automate the process. And it makes it really easy to send conversion data to LinkedIn uh, for attribution and optimization. So I think, mm -hmm. I think it's a great way to do it. Thank you. Joshua has a question in terms of the setup. So no other setup on the LinkedIn side of things, it will automatically start to optimize. Yep, exactly. Nothing else you need to do besides the steps that I mentioned. So once you start streaming the data, you have your conversion rule set up, you have it associated to a campaign, everything then will happen in the back end. So LinkedIn will do that matching right between your data and between who saw the ad. We'll start attributing that to a campaign and the optimization all happens in the back end for you. No additional action required. And Alberto actually is coming with a follow-up question to that too. How do I know the unique identifiers in my data are matched properly to LinkedIn users for attribution? Yeah, that is a really good question because the, the matching is, is key, right? And match rate is pretty key to this as well. So essentially what happens is that, you know, all LinkedIn members provide, you know, their email, first name, last name, and company name when they create an account. Um, so offline conversions like leverages this proprietary data and matches to the data that you upload in a very privacy safe way. Mm -hmm. So as long as we can match the data with a LinkedIn impression or a click, it can be used to determine attributed conversions. And typically what we find is that email matching is usually more precise than first name and last name. But the more of these kind of like unique identifiers that you include in your data, the better the match rate will be. So we essentially support, you know, hash email, first name, last name, company, title, and country. And these are essentially the key uh, user IDs that will be used for matching. Thank yeah. you. Another thing that I wanted to touch upon is, are the attribution models. So in LinkedIn, what kind of attribution models are you using? Yeah, uh, so there's currently two attribution models that's supported with offline conversions. One of them is last touch each campaign, and the other one is last touch last campaign. So last touch each campaign essentially gives credit to all campaigns that had an ad interac interaction within the look back window that you selected. Right. So within this model, we'll count conversions across all campaigns that served an impression within the attribution window to the member who converted. So that's last touch each campaign. Mm -hmm. And then the other option will be last touch last campaign where we will only see a single conversion attributed to the most recent campaign that has had an ad interaction. Right. Uh, so that will only, so in that case, you will only get credit for the last campaign uh, where the user interacted with the ad. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. And using dream data, obviously you've got multiple attribution models to choose as well. If you prefer to use that solution too. You mentioned another thing, look back window. Talk a little bit about the look back window for offline conversions. Yeah. So the look back window, um, essentially you can attribute conversions that happen up to 180 days in the past. And how that works is that you can set a max look back window of 90 days and we can track conversion events that happened up to 90 days ago. 
So the combination of these two 90-day periods allow us to look back 180 days in the past for an interaction with an ad. So and actually our recommendation is to set uh, the, the look back window to a maximum because we understand that the B2B journey is very long, right? So the longer you set the look back window, the more likely we're able to attribute your ad and the more likely, likely we're able to optimize for that. Absolutely agree. Like for B2Bs, the long customer journeys and many stakeholders in the journeys as well that might be have been served ads throughout the historical look back window, the, the longer it is, the better, I would say. Joshua has another question. Thanks for that. So will the optimization in LinkedIn only occur on campaigns with a conversion campaign objective or all campaigns? Yeah, I think what you what I would recommend and what I think might be the safest way forward is to set your campaign with the conversion as the main objective. That way I know that optimization is, is actually happening. You, ha you have that as a campaign objective. So I believe that is a requirement for other things. I can go back and check for other campaigns as well. But my recommendation is when you set up that campaign, have conversion as the main campaign objective. And for sure, we will then start to optimize uh, from conversions for those campaigns. That's good. Mike Alexander has a question. Would you consider expanding the look back window further than 180 days? Ask him for a friend. That is really good feedback. I'm sure your friend has probably asked us as well, because that <laughs> is the feedback that we hear, we hear quite often. Um, I think that's under consideration, right? Because we, as LinkedIn, like we definitely want to see more conversion events flow in, right? I think it's, it's beneficial for us. It's beneficial for our users. So that is something that we're considering right now. There's no timetable for that, but your feedback is definitely heard and being nice. discussed. Thank you so much. Kevin has a question about lead stages. So in your opinion, if you can only make one connection, which lead stages would you prioritize? Uh, making sure I understand the questions and one connection being you only want to connect like one data source to LinkedIn. That... We'll need a little bit of more explanation on this question, Kevin. So if you can refine the question and get back to us, we are going to pick this up. And then you mentioned security as well. So for your clients to be absolutely sure about running the offline conversions, walk us through about the security measures that you're taking for this as well. Yeah, absolutely. So data privacy, I think is really important. And that's something that we're really very careful about with your data and staying privacy compliant. So some of the measures that we take is that data is held for a maximum of 180 days. And we erase that after that. And then all email addresses are encrypted and hashed. But also additionally, like LinkedIn does not use the data for anything beyond matching, you know, ad relevance, optimization, and aggregate reporting on your conversions. Mm -hmm. um, so the data is being used on a very thoughtful manner and only for its intended purpose, I would say. And of course, we're complying with all the big regulations like GDPR. So yeah. we're definitely very, very conscious of data privacy here. Sounds good. And you mentioned a little bit about the cookies and the deletion of the cookies and so on. So how does that affect offline conversions? Yeah, the good news is that it doesn't really affect offline conversions at all because offline conversions does not rely on cookies to work. And this is a great point that you raised up because I think with the recent updates to browsers, you know, limiting the ability to leverage cookies, it's really important to think about like what alternative mechanisms I as a marketer has uh, to attribute conversions, which are becoming more and more important to my business. Right. So I think offline conversions is a tool that really lets you do it because it doesn't use cookies. Cause if you think back to how it's being set up, the conversion data is shared directly with LinkedIn either manually or with an API partner like Dream Data. So it essentially bypasses cookies. And I think that is sort of the beauty of it. It's future-proof and it's immune to the risk of cookie deprecation versus something like a pixel or a website tag uh, as a right. tracking solution. Very nice. That sounds good. And Dean, so did we miss talking through anything really important that I have might have missed asking you? No, I think we covered a lot. I think I would just maybe with the remaining time, I'll say like some best practices when using offline conversions Like we covered, you know, maximizing the look back window to capture the most conversions. The other thing that I will mention is you should also consider, I know we talk about cookie lists and deprecation and all that, 
but we actually recommend using inside tag, which is our, you know, essentially website tag in addition to offline conversions, because that gets you a more complete picture of conversion tracking. Sorry, I'm not sure why uh, my phone right. is ringing. Should have silenced it. But uh, using the inside tag in addition to offline conversions gives you a more complete picture, right, of the data because inside tag can track actions that happen on your website, and offline conversions can tell the story of what happens after the website. Yes. You know, so we actually recommend kind of using both to get you a more complete version of the data. And also the last thing I will say in a plug for Dream Data is I would really recommend using a solution like Dream Data to share data as frequently and in as close to real time as possible, because the sooner and the more frequently you share the data, the better the attribution will be and better the optimization will be. So right. I think these would just be some things to consider when you start using the solution. Very cool. And you all heard the 7%. So that's kind of, well, you're leaving money on the table. There is one more very important question. Is the conversion data account-based or individual-based? I believe it's account-based in a B2B scenario. So that's what I would recommend to just have kind of your, essentially we're looking at the scope of it, account-based will be what I would recommend. Absolutely. Yeah. Green data is a pure B2B solution. So all of your customer journeys are account-based. And when pushing back the data to LinkedIn, that is also account-based information. So imagine how much better targeting there is on your ads that are actually being feeded back to LinkedIn to buy simply better ads for coming prospects. All right. So Dane, thank you so much for joining us for this session. We're so happy for this collaboration. We're looking forward for what first is going to bring in. We're looking into a lot of various other features that we can bring out to our clients and your clients at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. And question for you, Laura, actually, uh, yeah. that I have. So if I'm a user, if I'm a marketer who's interested in using offline conversions with Dream Data, like how do I actually get started on it on your platform? Thank I know, you this for is a question for you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So to start with, Dream Data has a free trial not even a free trial, a free account that you kick off for Dream Data for two first week of the Dream Data free account. You can connect your CRM and all of your sources to Dream Data and mapping to Pipeline as well. So kick it off on the website. And then as soon as you have connected all your sources, you will start seeing the performance of your ads. And by then you will be contacted either by sales or you can talk to us or talk to me to continue being a Dream Data's client or just continue on the free version of Dream Data as well, using it as an alternative for Google Analytics. Thank you for this question. Awesome. Thanks for the answer, Laura, and thanks for having me. And if any other questions come up from the attendees, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn and we can uh, private message or whatever. I'm always happy to talk off on conversions. Fantastic. Thank you yeah. so much. Have a fantastic day, Dean. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. We hope you like listening to us. Subscribe to our podcast and the ones that we have been guests on. And if you have any feedback for us, uh, just do let us know. And should there be a guest that you think we should be talking to, then like pitch us. We're looking forward to seeing you.